This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. I'm putting my, my sodium ethyl sulfate in the uh, oven. At, and you can see, this was already, this stuff was bone dry. But you can see that the it's wet now. And it was totally dry. It was total powder. So I am driving off the ethanol crystallization that's on there. I just looked it up at 86 degrees Celsius. It decom I mean, it uh, drives off the uh, ethanol and it becomes anhydrous. However, if you take it above that, up to like 120, you can see this is like a paste now. If you take it up to 120 C, it will decompose and you'll lose your product. So I just took it out of the oven right now and it is at 81 C. I'm going to try to keep it in there at 86, see if it actually becomes dry instead of this paste. And hopefully it won't decompose that much. Alright, now I didn't dry out all the sodium ethyl sulfate. It's starting to smell after a while, but I did get most of it dried up. This is the sodium nitrite I'm going to use. I'm going to use it right out of the bottle, 99% pure. Now this is my potassium carbonate. I'm going to take it up, I'm going to put it in the oven at 120 degrees, because some of this is probably turned into bicarbonate, but at 120 degrees everything will decompose down into potassium carbonate. So it'll be nice and pure. Alright, so here we go. We're going to make our nitroethane. I got, first of all, 67 grams of silver of sodium nitrite. I have 96 grams of sodium ethyl sulfate, and I have 5.6 grams of potassium carbonate. So what I got is a plastic baggie. I'm going to dump them all into the plastic baggie. Ziplock it. Throw it around, keep tumbling it, tumbling it till it's kind of mixed up. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in this round bottom flask. It's a 2000 milliliter. Uh, I could have used a 1,000 milliliter flask. That don't take up much room at all. Here's my apparatus. Keep in mind, I'm going to go over this. Figures 86C makes the sodium ethyl sulfate anhydrous. 120C decomposes it. 160C it melts. And we are going to take the temp up to 125 to 130C. Which means our oil temperature is going to be higher than that, like 135, 140. Here's my apparatus. It's just a simple distillation. Um, here's my receiving flask, water cold condenser. I have a thermometer for the oil. I'm going to put into this. I'm going to put this in an oil bath and to keep the temperature nice and uh, evened out. I've got a thermometer here to make sure I don't want that inside to be more than 135. I want it to be between 125 and 135. And I have my still head uh, thermometer. And we're just going to basically heat this up, like I said, to 125, 130C. And hopefully we will distill out our product. Keep in mind, when I say these stats, like uh, for sodium ethyl sulfate, the boiling point, and decomposition. I'm just pulling that off the internet. I'm not checking to see if these are reputable or credible. Credible. I don't vouch for them. I'm just saying what I pulled off the internet. <laughs> Lots of like 100C. The oil's at about 158C and nothing's happening yet. We'll see when it gets to 125. When the puck got about 110C, it started having vapor in the steel head, but nothing was coming over. Right now, it's at 122C, 
and the steel head still isn't even at 60 although I don't know if you can see on camera there's a lot of yeah you can see that front see the front that's what's coming over yet though nothing's really happening in the pot I don't know if you can see it but there's tons of smoke I don't understand why this isn't working I have the pot all the way up to 150 C now I mean, yeah, it's distilling. That's a receiving class. You can see all that smoke. It's just uh, flooding my flooding my condenser. But the still head won't get past sixty-two. So I doubt any of that is nitroethane. I mean, if it's coming over at 62, then what's the deal? Well, it's getting too hot inside the grease, so I had to take it out. It's going to break my thermometer. My thermometer only goes up to like 150. It's already passed. That's probably about 157. You can see it's turning the stuff brown inside there. Um, stop making stop making so much gas although it's still making some vapor there you can see still head went down below 60 below 58 actually I don't know where though I can't see it so I don't know I'm guessing this is not nitroethane because it would be liquid if it was at 60 degrees it wouldn't be a gas A 25 milliliter flask is probably what a third full of what I don't know but the gas has subsided in the receiving end of the apparatus see the chunks I wish I really wish I would have used the mortar and pestle to crush those sodium ethyl sulfate chunks into the silver nitrite really mix them up better those chunks are just like useless. This is going forever. Still head is actually up to 70 now. Almost hit 75. I took the thermometer out of there on that side thing there. I just replaced it with whatever because I'm going so high here. I mean the oil temperature I have it at 220 degrees right now. Celsius. Still only distilling over about 75 C, man. I don't know what to do with that. And it's 25 milliliter flask. It's getting full up, man. I don't know what it is, though. Maybe natural ethane forms an azeotrope with ethanol. And when the sodium ethan, eth, ethyl sulfate decomposes, you got ethanol and nitroethane ethane distills out. I, I don't know. I'm just going to keep going until I, I mean, if I can distill something, I'm going to distill it. This is the weirdest reaction, though. I just don't get it. Do you see how that is? It barely distills. So much, uh, actually, it's going at a pretty good rate now. You can see how the pot's getting black, or brown, I guess. Whatever is distilling also has a yellow tint, I see, to it. Okay, so here's what we got. That's a 25 milliliter flask. Everything came over between 60 and 70 C, maybe 75 C for a little bit. Anyways, I'm going to dump it in here. A step funnel. And I have 25, God, this stinks. I have 25 milliliters of cold water. I'm not going to use all of it, just a little bit there to wash this out. I'm going to dump this in. Now we know there's at least alcohol in there. We know that. Uh, is there nitroethane? I don't know. 
But I do know that water is less dense than nitroethane and so is ethanol. And since nitroethane is the most dense thing, it should form on the bottom. Shake this up a little. I don't really see anything separating, but we'll give it 15, 20 minutes or whatever. So it's been, it's only been about five minutes, but I don't see any separation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more water. Altogether, I've added about 10 mils of water. Shake it up. Then we're going to let it sit this time longer. So it's still just one phase. So I'm going to add 15 milliliters of aqueous uh, sodium chloride that's saturated. It's basically just table salt that's uh, in water. Shake us up. I actually do see a biphasic thing here. Yeah, that's definitely making it whatever. <laughs> the nitroethane would be on top this time because sodium chloride makes it denser. At least that's what I'm guessing. Now let's let this sit for a while. Now that's not saying that that's nitroethane. Who knows what it is? So there's my stuff, whatever it is. Um, I'm guessing that's it because this is 50 milliliters and this is like 18, 19 milliliters. I know I didn't make no 50 milliliters. <coughs> Someone put a star bar in. Put a little bit of calcium chloride in there and hydrous. And when I show up pretty a little bit more. And I'm gonna put that on this magnetic stir. Put some cellophane over it because it stinks. And I'm gonna let that stir for a little bit. Alright, gonna stir, I'm gonna filter it. So I have it set up for a simple distillation. Okay, so that all came over between 65 and 75, and then the last milliliter came over, it jumped up to 90. So that's a failure. So I also wanted to mention that I'm trying to sell t-shirts to see if this channel is even worth continuing with. Um, so I got about 30 logos, and I'm trying to put about 50 more logos up, meaning different designs. Um, this is one of them that I'm wearing, Mad Scientist, JBSC, and it has Mad Scientist on it. So before I try to do Patreon or whatever, I want to see if I can sell some of these t-shirts. I mean, if I go all summer and I only sell like two t-shirts, obviously, the channel is a flop and, you know, there's no sense continuing. Um, but here's a couple designs. And not all of these shirts are about science, although most of them are. Some of them are about other stuff. But if you want to see the designs or, you know, buy a t-shirt, you just want to check the designs out just to see what they look like. I'll leave a link in the description below the videos. Now, there's not just t-shirts with the logos on it. You can also get uh, leggings, uh, coats, uh, hoodies, stickers, ashtrays, you know, tapestry, posters, magnets. There's a million things that uh, they sell there that would have the same logo on it. Tote bags, you know, just so many things I can't even remember. And my buddy is also, Old Man Ramblings, is also selling me t-shirts. So I'm going to leave a description, a link to his channel and also his t-shirts. Um, so if you really want to help the channel, buy a t-shirt. I mean, they are expensive, but, the, you know what I mean, it's to, show, it's to help the channel out. And either way, whether you buy a shirt or not, uh, have a great day, and always remember, science is great.